I didn't realize that nobody was eating, and I was the only one with a bag of snacks making a whole bunch of noise. So how I happened on to fasting was to heal my own hormonal health. And at the time, I didn't realize it was my hormonal health that I needed fasting for. So the, the short version of a very long story was that at 40 years old, I literally had one goal in my life, at that, like for my health. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Mindy in the house. All right. <laughs> I appreciate that. The carnivore diet. Because of the meat. Honestly, you've really touched my heart. So Fast Like a Girl, it's ready for pre-order now. I hope this book changes your life the way the information has changed hundreds of thousands of women that have applied it. From the bottom of my heart, enjoy and let's get healthy together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna put my water down here. So, okay. I want to know, just so I know what kind of fasting experience we have here, how many of you feel like you're, you do intermittent fasting, 13 to 15 hours pretty regularly? Raise your hand. Okay, keep them up, keep them up. Okay, keep them up if you have pretty good experience doing 24 hours. Keep them up. Okay, any, keep them up if you do 48, if you've done a 48 hour fast before. Okay, I love it. Okay, and keep it up if you've done three days or longer before. Awesome. Okay, go ahead and put your hands down. Okay, now for the women, those of you that have hopefully been watching my YouTube videos, how many of you feel like you know how to fast for your hormones? Put your hands up. Okay, awesome. So we've got some work to do. I realize I need a clicker perhaps to turn. Oh yeah, thank you. Okay, so for those of you that don't know me, I'm going to fill you in on a little bit of my health history and how I even got to stand here as a fasting expert is sort of a pain to purpose journey that you know Ben talked about and Pompa talked about. Um, but honestly, I am the most unlikely person. Uh, if you talk to me about 10 years ago, I am the most unlikely person to be giving fasting advice. I was that person, the minute I woke up in the morning, I had breakfast, I either had a smoothie or I had a piece of toast with some almond butter. I did that for about 30 years, that was my go-to. I carried snacks with me everywhere I went. In fact, the joke in our, in our group is that the very first seminar I went to with doc, to see Dr. Pompa speak, I literally brought a bag of about 10 different bars of some kind and I pulled them out at like 10 in the morning thinking, that everybody was gonna eat and listen to Dr. Pompa. I didn't realize that nobody was eating and I was the only one with a bag of snacks making a whole bunch of noise. So how I happened on to fasting was to heal my own hormonal health. And at the time, I didn't realize it was my hormonal health that I needed fasting for. So the, the short version of a very long story was that at 40 years old, I literally had one goal in my life, at that, like for my health. I had other goals, but I had one goal for my health. And I always say that was to fit into my skinny jeans. I had a number on the scale that I wanted to see, and I had a pair of jeans. They were actually, do you remember those Hudson G's jeans with the, with the button poppet? Okay, so I had a little muscle booty back then, and I had maybe a little extra fat on it. And I, when I put those jeans on, I, my, it didn't look like a muscle butt, it didn't look like a big butt. And so I wanted my, those jeans to look damn good on me at 40, and I wanted the number on the scale to be as, the same number I saw in high school. And that was my health goal. And I accomplished it. And I accomplished it by working my ass off at the gym. Am I allowed to swear up here? I hope that's okay. <laughs> Um, and manipulating my food and counting calories. So I get to 40, I'm in the best shape I thought of my life, and by 42, 43, I am waking up at night totally drenched, I am depressed, I am anxious, I can't sleep. The joke in the family was that I would come downstairs, you know, at like I always go to bed first and I would come down at 11 o'clock and I'd be like, who's chewing so loud? One of you guys wrinkled some paper, I heard it upstairs. Anything would wake me up. 
And I, I was a hot mess, and I was doing everything right. I was eating right, I thought. I was exercising right, I thought. I was taking supplements, I was getting chiropractic, I was getting acupuncture. I, th I thought I was doing everything right. And I realized that what I wasn't doing was taking care of my lifestyle and matching those to my hormones. And after about a couple of years, I mean, it really was like at 42, I just started spiraling, that I actually decided I was gonna go seek help. And, you know, I don't know, we have a lot of health practitioners in the room. Hopefully you're probably a little bit like, well, I can solve my own problems. That's what I thought I could do, but I had gotten so bad that I decided I was going to seek help from a fellow mom at my kid's school who was a very respected OB. And asking for help as a doctor is really difficult to do, so I decided to do it at a science event, at a science fair, where we're looking at two, these two science projects, and she's standing, her name was Heidi, she's standing next to me, and we're looking at these science projects, and I turn to her and I say, Heidi, I'm so, I apologize for talking shop with you today, but I'm really struggling with my hormones and I need some help. Do you think I should come see you? And I tell her my symptoms and what she said to me after that absolutely changed the trajectory of the way I approached my lifestyle. She turned to me and she said, Mindy, I have a practice full of women with those symptoms and my medical textbooks have failed me. What are you doing to help women with those symptoms? And it, I'm sitting there in disbelief thinking, wait, wait, I, I need your help. Like maybe at this point I need to go on some kind of medication, like just I need your help and you're asking me to help you with your patients? And I left that night from the science fair and I went home and I started Googling perimenopause and menopause and I found out that my lifestyle was completely opposite of what my hormones needed. I was eating six, eight meals a day. I was eating breakfast. Um, at the time I was paleo, so I, I switched to keto pretty quickly and I started to discover fasting. And I dove into the research on fasting. I applied the principles of fasting and everything in my life started to change. My energy went up, my sleep improved, my mental clarity got better, my 3 p.m. crash went away literally within a couple of weeks. And so I got so excited about all of it, I decided I gotta tell the world about fasting. At the time, do you guys remember Periscope? Did anybody do Periscope? Okay, it was like the first version before Facebook Live. And so I decided to try some Periscope and go on Periscope to teach people about fasting. And that was a whole nother story onto itself, but out of Periscope came Facebook Lives. And I started to do, I did for 90 days. I did one video every single day for 90 days on the power of the human body and the power of fasting. At the end of 90 days, we had, my practice had completely exploded but we had taken those videos and put them over onto YouTube. And we went from like a thousand people on YouTube to 40,000 subscribers in one month from just teaching the principles of fasting to people. And I started to realize, oh my gosh, people want to know how to fast. It's free, it's time effective. How are we gonna teach the world how to fast? And so I just started doing that on YouTube and out of all those videos, we have about 900, or I have about 900 on there now, or maybe more, um, the women started to cry out. And the women started to say, I love the results I'm getting, but my hair is falling out. I love that I'm thinking clearer, but I lost my cycle, and I'm only 35 years old. I love that I can lose weight, but all of a sudden I'm starting to experience a thyroid storm. So we started, when I say we, it was really my team because they've been in there in the trenches like answering questions and listening to women. And we started to see that these were some very, very common symptoms or imbalances that women were experiencing 
that if you got a woman to cycle her fasting, to do what Dr. Pompa talked about, where we teach this feast, famine, cycling, but you time it to her hormones, that you can affect these without medication, without supplementation. Literally, the power of the human body can be turned on so infertility can go away, perimenopausal symptoms went away, hot flashes, depression, anxiety, all of that went away just from learning how to cycle fasting. I, I have to tell you that I hope the day I leave this planet, one of the things I will be the most grateful about what I've been able to do with this information is that we literally have hundreds and thousands of women primarily who have overcome these conditions using the cycling of fasting. I've never met these women. I've never, they've never spent a dime with me. I just have given this free information out and people are changing their lot, these conditions by learning to cycle fasting, which is what I wanna teach you to do today. And I had to put andropods in there because I am getting a lot of people, a lot of men are saying, well, what about andropods? What about, uh, what, what should I do? And I do have some information today on men and fasting. One slide. Um, because we're a little more complicated, so I'm gonna explain the differences there. Um, but I, I definitely, since this is fasting and hormones, wanted to make sure that we didn't leave the men out. Okay, so here's the, here's the real basic principle of what you need to know. These hormones do really well with fasting. So I, I, we have some cases where we need to bring estrogen back into balance. We start to throw some longer fasts at it, and it's incredible how we can bring estrogen and testosterone back into balance. If you want to slow the aging process down after 30, you're not getting any more growth hormone. So you need to have some way to get some growth hormone and slow that aging process down, and fasting can absolutely help you do that. Here's the challenge. These two hormones don't do well with fasting. Now, I want to say that cortisol is negatively impacted by fasting, but really, it's just like any other stressor. It's like a, wor a long workout, it's, it's like a stressful day. Um, all of those activities raise cortisol. And what you'll see here in a moment is the minute you raise cortisol, you start to affect insulin in a negative way, and you affect your sex hormones, specifically progesterone, in a negative way. So when I say that women need to fast differently, here's what I want you to know, women in the group, is that progesterone is not a driving hormone for men. It's, it's, you know, it's present, but in very small amounts. For us, if you want, hey, men that hang around women, if you want to be, uh, us to be happy, you want to get us some progesterone. <laughs> like seriously, like Dr. Anna had some cream yesterday. I was like, where can I rub this? Like I just need to put this, tell me how to like bathe in this progesterone because as a 52-year-old woman, man, I'd love to go back and tell my 32-year-old self, cherish your progesterone, please. But progesterone makes us livable. So we don't want to fast when we go into these longer fasts. When we go into keto, we tank progesterone. And I'm going to show you exactly why this is important. So men, here's your slide. Here's what you need to know. Your testosterone is what drives you. I did an amazing podcast interview with John Gray. I'm actually bringing him back onto my podcast in a couple weeks. I loved talking with this man about hormones. If you don't know John Gray, his men are from Mars, women are from Venus, and his new book is really, really good. And so he is a 70-some-year-old man, and he gets on the podcast interview with me, and he's like, oh my God, I fast to keep my testosterone up, which we talked about for a very long time. And at one point, I'm like, this is really interesting. I'm having a, a testosterone slash sex slash libido conversation with a 74-year-old man. But it was, it was really interesting. And he fasts because it spikes testosterone. Now, I want to tell you, men, that when you go into a 13 to 15-hour intermittent fast, you increase your testosterone by 1,300%. That's what the research says. If you go 24 hours, you increase it by 2,000%. And men's testosterone comes in every 15 minutes. Okay, 
Men, when I get to the women, I want you to understand women and, and a woman's testosterone and why we can be a mismatch of testosterone. So yours comes in every 15 minutes, ours comes in strong in a short four to five day period every month. Men, if you want to increase growth hormone, awesome, you can do it with fasting. You can lose weight like this. How many people have gone, I've watched couples go on fasting regimes together and the man, even my parents, like my 80 year old parents fast and my dad will walk in and he'll be like, oh my God, my belly's down. I've gone down two belt loops. And he's like, and I did just what you said for like a week and like, boom, it's gone. And my mom is like, I don't know, I did what he did. I'm not, nothing. I don't think it's working, Mindy. I don't know what's going on. Okay, that is what so many couples do. So this is why I want to separate it out. Now, Dr. Pompa showed weekly cycling for fasting is fabulous for men. It's also fabulous for postmenopausal women. I'm going to give you guys some really specific protocols that you can follow. So, but I want you to understand that you're good with weekly, a 5-1-1, five days of intermittent fasting, one day of a longer fast and one day of not fasting, that works great for a man, might even work great for a postmenopausal woman. But a cycling woman and a perimenopausal woman, we have to move to a monthly version of this, not a weekly one. So for women, we can use fasting as an incredible tool to balance estrogen, to balance testosterone, we can get growth hormone too to slow down the aging process. We can, we, it's not a tool for progesterone. I'm going to show you that in a, in a moment. It's great for insulin sensitivity. So if you're struggling to lose weight, I'm going to show you how to cycle this. Um, and we have to match it to either a monthly cycle or I'll show you how you can read like a Dutch test and look at your, at your hormones and map it to what you might find on something like a Dutch test. Now women, so we've now veered off of men. I gave you your slide, You're, yeah, so, so now I'm speaking to the women, but here's what I'll tell you is if you have a woman in your life, you want to hear everything I'm about to say. Um, I actually, my 19 year old son, after I talked to John Gray, I sat him down and I said, hey, you, I want to tell you about a woman's hormones and I can show you how you can be like the greatest hero in your girlfriend's life if you understand these things. So, um, so pay attention men. Um, okay. There's three concepts we have to think about. One is the hormonal hierarchy. I give Dr. Anna Kabeca, she taught me this, she taught me the power of oxytocin. Really, really important, I'll show you that in a moment. Women, we have to think about a monthly hormonal cycle and we have to think about a lifetime hormonal cycle. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is what I refer to as the hormonal hierarchy and this is what's so interesting about perimenopause and menopause and just women's hormones in general is that when we start getting anxious, when we start getting depressed, when we start these menopause, perimenopausal symptoms show up, we go to the bottom of the hierarchy to solve that first. So we want to throw a supplement, medication, we want to change our estrogen, progesterone, testosterone levels, but we cannot do that without addressing insulin. And when I have been observing all these women fasting, we get these extreme fasters that are like, I want to do it exactly right. I want my numbers to be exactly right. Tell me what macros to have. And they become so rigid with their fasting that they spike their cortisol. And then they, when their cortisol go, goes up, they can't balance insulin. How many people have tried to lose weight when their stress is really high? It doesn't work because your body says, wait a second, we're running from a tiger right now. We don't need to lose weight. We need to stay alive. Ben said this, that the innate intelligence has one priority and that's to keep you alive. So if you're struggling with your fasting and this really goes for both men and women and your stress is super high, you're gonna wanna do more of what Dr. Pompa talked about, this hormetic stress where you come in with a fast and then you do some feast and then you come in with a fast and you do some feast because too much fasting keeps cortisol high and over time can make you actually more insulin resistant. But in short bursts, it makes you insulin sensitive and that's for both men and women. 
And then with cortisol, you can really bring cortisol down with oxytocin, which is why I just want to say thank you to those of you who've given me multiple hugs over the last couple of days. I am, my love language is touch. And so all these hugs have definitely given me a boost of oxytocin. Again, Dr. Anna and I talked about, I was like, why do you look so beautiful? And she goes, oh, I have this grandbaby and all that oxytocin, I'm holding this grandbaby. But we can't lose sight of how powerful oxytocin is for all of these hormones. So again, I've had this really interesting bird's eye view to watching so many women fast and so many women wanting to get the result that they deserve to get and they're doing all the right things except they forgot oxytocin. They forgot to be grateful. They forgot to hug more. They forgot to pet their animals. They forgot that those simple things affect all of these different hormones. So if that's you, I want to make sure that you don't lose sight of that. Now, I want to bring this up to your attention because when I was putting my hormonal picture together in my early 40s, I literally had to come back to this picture. And I've come back to this picture a thousand times. And I want, I'm a visual learner, so I want to give you just a really simple way to know your hormones. When your hormones go high, which is in ovulation, they're in the middle, and the week before your period, you do not want to be going into longer fasts. And I'm gonna break each one of these down. But if you are a cycling woman, when these hormones go up, your fasting goes down. Now, the ovulation window, you will see that we can do some 15-hour fasts, but the week before our period, you actually, this is how smart your body is, your body actually makes you more insulin resistant the week before your period. And it does that because it needs glucose to be able to make progesterone. So the innate intelligence purposely has you craving carbs so you can bring your carb load up so you can have the proper glucose to make progesterone. But what I see so many people in the keto world and in the fasting world, they love how they fast and so women just fast all, you know, all month long and after a couple of months, they're losing their cycles. So that week, as you will see, is really important. Okay, this is also really important, especially if you are over 40 or you are around a woman that's over 40. Uh, it doesn't matter if she's 60 or 70, this is what we go through. So in the middle of menopause, which it's really hard, at, we all have different points in that we hit menopause, but around 40, we start to go into this estrogen up and down. And this is what makes us crazy. We like literally, like I tell my husband all the time, I'm like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Like I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I know I'm just like the brain is just recalibrating to all this loss of estrogen. My daughter was away during the pandemic at school and she moved back home and we were having a discussion one day and she said to me, yeah, mom, you seem different. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just, my brain's recalibrating to the chaos that you had when you left, I was in this estrogen up and down and now the brain's actually finally being able to recalibrate itself. But this up and down of estrogen is what gives us hot flashes. It's what makes us gain weight. When women, if you are like 45, 55 and you're like, I was doing this, I ate the same way, I exercised the same way and I don't know what happened at 45, I just started putting on weight and I don't know what I did you didn't do anything wrong. You just forgot to realize that when estrogen goes low, you become more insulin resistant. That same diet that you ate at 35 is not working for you at 45 and it's not working for you at 55. You absolutely have to start to make changes to adapt to these hormones as they change. So the rules of fasting for women, and these are like tried and true, and I'll, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna run through some protocols with you so you can look at the monthly ones. Um, I'm gonna pull some things out of uh, my new book that will come out in December called Fast Like a Girl. So you guys are actually the first crew to see some of the protocols that I've put in the book. But these are the tried and true that we have to think about. First, estrogen likes insulin to be lower. So that first part of our cycle, day one to day 10, Go ahead and do your three-day water fast. Go ahead and throw your 48-hour, what I call a dopamine reset. 
Go ahead and go into these longer fasts. Go keto. You're going to be amazing. Progesterone likes cortisol to be lower. So the week before your period, if you're, not, if you're going to decide that that's the time you're going to try a longer fast, please don't do that. You want, if you're like 13 hours of fasting and you have that, you don't feel like it raises progesterone, you might be able to do that the week before your period. But for the most part, I want women to not fast the week before their period and you're not going into keto the week before your period. And then the third principle that I think is really important is just because you make a hormone doesn't mean you actually break the hormone down and get that hormone into the cell. So Dr. Pompa finished up his talk talking about toxicity, and this is one of the challenges we have, is you could go on medication to bring those hormones up, but if you're fully toxic, and your gut is out of balance, your liver's been overstressed, you're not gonna break that hormone down and get it into the cell to make it usable for the cell. And I'll show you some variations in how we can be able to, do, to use fasting to heal the gut and heal the liver. So there are two key times, I talked about this, that you wanna modify fasting. Just, I'm gonna hammer this home. These are the two key times. I wanna tell you that um, I'm seeing more evidence because of the toxicity that we're living in, that ovulation for women is not a great time to go into these longer fasts because when hormones go up, we detox more. So that estrogen that's going up and down for the perimenopausal women, that causes lead and mercury and all those heavy metals to come out of stored tissue, tissues and they go into the bloodstream and it goes up into the brain and now you've got yourself a massive toxicity issue. So you will see in the new book when, it, when you get it in your hands that I have modified ovulation. I like people to keep their fasting below 17 hours because 17 hours is where we start to hit autophagy and that's where you can start to release some of these metals. So this is a new thing that I just added based off of some clinical experience. So real quickly, and you guys, I, you, go ahead and take these pictures as I go into some of the protocols here. But just remember that at ovulation, your estrogen and your testosterone is at its highest. Okay, let me tell you, in the new book, I had, I, I, to me, hormones should be fun. So we put all these fancy names out there like follicular and luteal and, you know, and estradiol and everybody's like, what? Like, it's just like a little confusing. So I had to give them some, some fun names. So I gave in the new book, ovulation period, our manifestation phase. Because you know what? When we're ovulating, we are wickedly powerful. Like seriously, if you want to like handle a conflict, ask for a raise, you want to like start a new project, start it during ovulation because you've got estrogen and estrogen makes us incredible conversationalists and gives us laser focus, gives us incredible mental clarity. And then you've got testosterone. Well, testosterone gives us drive and motivation. And then you get a little bit of progesterone during this time that kind of chills us out. So I was actually at a, a seminar a couple weeks ago talking to a dad who was pouring his heart out to me about his teenage daughter and how, much, how he was struggling with her. And I said, do you know, do you know how hormones work? And I, I showed him the cycle and I said, if you want to connect with her, if you want to uh, really get some good conversation with her, find out when she's ovulating. Seriously, because this is when you can have some better connection because she's going to be more mentally ready to talk to you. And the week before her period, that's not the time to come in strong on her. Seriously, like, when I thought about this, I was like, why didn't I even know this for my own daughter? She's 22 now. But this is, you know, where we're at hormonally. Men, if you want your wife, if you want to get with your wife, your best bet is ovulation. Now, if you're not trying to have a baby, that's up to you, but I wanna tell you that that's when her libido is gonna be the highest. Just saying, giving you a little secret. Whereas, you know, day 20, as she's moving more into that week before, she wants to withdraw. She wants to be more, less social. She's gonna kinda sit on the couch more. She may not wanna be touched. So your touching opportunity is ovulation. <laughs> and then, I also want to point out that where we start to see real benefits to breaking these hormones down is when we really lean into repairing our gut 
and it's in the ovulation window that estrogen and testosterone has to be broken down. So that's when you want to up your greens. This is one reason I do want you out of ketosis as well during the ovulation because you want to lean into more vegetables. You want to lean into things that will really support the gut more. Huge fan of hydrogen water lately. We've been using this in our community with great success. The week before our period, again, we are going to minimize cortisol. This means you say women, the overachieving, rushing woman, this is when you say no. When you're like, God, you know, my friend wants me to go out on Friday night and then I have that social thing on Saturday and then the kids have like sporting events all day Sunday. I don't know if I can do all of that. If it's the week before your period, the answer is no. Because the more we rush, the more we are stressed during that week, the more our hormones suffer. This is also the time we want to bring glucose up, so don't be doing keto. And again, we want to nurture ourselves. I called this the nurture phase in the new book. Here's the new book, and you uh, can pre-order it, by the way, on Amazon. It's called Fast Like a Girl. I go through six different length fasts. Um, I show you two different eating styles. I have something called the fasting cycle. I'm going to show you here in a moment. Um, I have a 30-day fasting reset for my post -men Where are my postmenopausal women? I've heard you. I, I get comments all the time, like, you always talk about cycling and fasting. What about me? I'm 65. What do I do? I now have a reset for you that will be, a th and I'll show it to you today, a 30 days of fasting that will mind all your hormones, and you don't have to, uh, the beautiful thing is you don't have to time it to a cycle. So I've got recipes, I've got a whole chapter on how to break a fast, so really, really excited about this book coming out. Okay, women with regular cycles. Here's where we go into protocols. You guys are gonna wanna take pictures um, as I walk through these protocols. Here's the way, what I did is, after so many years of studying with Dr. Pompa, um, you know, one of the things, some of you may have heard this story, was that when I did find fasting, I loved it so much, I just did it all the time. And then I ran a Dutch test on myself around 45, and my hormones were worse than a postmenopausal woman. And I, and I still had a cycle, but I sat there and I looked at that at 45, and I was like, oh my God, what did I do? And so I took my Dutch t test to Dr. Pompa, and he looks at it and he goes, girl, you gotta eat. What are you doing? You got to eat. And so I really started to look at when did I have to eat? What part of my cycle did I need to eat? At 45, I was starting to get, uh, I, was, I felt like I was going into perimenopause. It was, I was getting a lot more spotting, and I just thought it was the natural part of going into perimenopause. As I started to do what I'm going to show you right now, using this tool called the fasting cycle, I, my cycle came back at 52. I still have a cycle. I think I'm maybe heading into menopause, but every time I follow this, it cleans everything up, and then my period comes back, and you know, the normal age for a woman, a healthy age for a woman to go through menopause is somewhere between 52 and 55, based off what science is showing us. So the later we can go through it, the, the healthier it is for long-term diseases. So you can take a picture of this. We don't have it on social media. We're only t uh, teaching the fasting cycle in my Reset Academy. For those of you that are in that or people who want to join it, um, it will be in the new book, but it won't come out on social until the book comes out. Okay, so here's what I did, and this is where we start to go into protocols. Women, if you have a, a, a normal cycle and you're just learning these principles, this is what I call a 30-day fasting reset for the beginner or the intermediate. Now, in the book, so I've got to fast forward it a little bit for you here, I have three different phases. The power phases are when those hormones are low and you can fast longer and you can go keto. The manifestation phase is your ovulation phase where women, we can rule the world. And we want to keep our fast kind of moderate and we want to bring our glucose up. And then the nurture phase is that phase before our cycle where we need to nurture ourselves. We need to take amazing care of ourselves. And I want to point out that it's us taking amazing care of ourselves. If you're a woman, and I used to be this woman that was like, yeah, I need to be nurtured. Where my husband needs to nurture me. My kids need to nurture me. My friends need to nurture me. Why is, why is nobody nurturing me? And then I realized because I wasn't nurturing myself. 
So I named this the nurture phase that week before our cycle because we need to nurture ourselves first. And then the, set, the other part that I really want to bring to your attention is how important women, we nurture each other. We come together and collaborate together. So this would be, you can see what I did is day one through day four, you go into intermittent fasting. You do 13 hours. I have a diet that I call ketobiotic, where it's keto and you're putting in a lot of sauerkraut and things that will support the healthy microbiome. It's in the book. But you would do four days of 13 hours. Then one day you would step out and you would go 15 hours. And then day six through 10, you can go 17 hours. So you see how I went, I started to step up the fasting. But then when we go back into, mani into your ovulation window, the manifest manifestation phase, we go down to 13. Then we come out of manifestation, we have this little dip in our, in our hormones, and now we, go to we can go back up to 15, and then we don't fast the week before. That is hormetic stress in the beginning for somebody as they're learning to do this. Now, if you are really advanced and you're like, that's not really that, it's like what Pompa said, how do we know how long you should be in a cold, cold plunge? Then you are gonna wanna do this one, where you can see I have you go up one day up into a little bit longer fast. So day six, you would go up, and then you would come down into 17, and you can, the, you can read the rest here. But what I am hoping that women will do is that you'll learn we do, we kind of build up our fasts in the ovulation and then we bring down our fasts, I'm sorry, in, in the um, follicular phase, we build up in the power phases and then when ovulation and manifestation phase happens, we bring it down, then we come out of ovulation, we build up our fasts and then we bring it down. So we're, it's, it's hor I've created that hormetic stress where you're going up, down, up, down. Now with your food, the power phases are great for doing keto food. But when those hormones go high during that day 10 to day 15 in the week before your period, stop being in keto. Get some more nourishing what we call hormone feasting foods. And I, it's in the book, I wanted to stick with fasting for the sake of this lecture. Now, what if you're a postmenopausal woman? What if you're a woman who is on like an IUD and you don't really have a clear cycle? What if you have PCOS and you don't have a cycle and you, you don't really know where your hormones are at? If you suspect you have normal progesterone levels, you would do a 511 like Dr. Pompa talked about. And I really like that for women, you stick it about, this would be like a beginner, the, that five for five days you do 13 to 15 hours of intermittent fasting. One day you really stretch your fast, but you're gonna wanna go into more of the plant-based foods I didn't say plant-based only, I am a huge fan of, of eating meat, but we do need to look at what I call the three Ps, probiotic, prebiotic, and um, polyphenol foods for our microbiome. So one day a week you're gonna really feed those, and then one day a week you don't fast, and you do what I call hormone feasting foods, where, which are like your potatoes and your squashes, and some of your citrus fruits, and you bring your glucose up. So this would work for menopausal women because we don't do it for a monthly or postmenopausal or a woman who's maybe lost her cycle for a variety of reasons. Now, if you know you have low progesterone, then you're gonna wanna take two days a week where you're not fasting. So this could be the menopause, you know, the 65 year old woman who is still struggling with anxiety, still struggling with sleep she's gonna to need to take two days a week where she's not in keto. She's really minding those progesterone levels. I'm a huge fan of the Dutch test, so I really think every woman, we could end cancer, we could end so much suffering if every woman got a Dutch test. So if you haven't had one, get one, and then you would, this will make a whole lot more sense to you. Last couple of things. How do we know women when we're, not fast, when we're fasting too much? This is really, really important because one of my pet peeves as I've been out in the world educating women on fasting is that we get this, we've been told no keto, no fasting. We get the absolutes. And you, as we play with these principles, it becomes a little bit like a dance. You start like, for me, I love the 17 hour fast. I do a lot of 17 hour fasting. But then I have to remind myself that I, there's days I gotta eat breakfast. 
And then there's days that I, like I just got through a th uh, doing two three-day water fasts. I did one in April with my group, and then I just did one with another group. I hadn't done a three-day water fast in a really long time. So it, there's a, this in and out sort of dance that needs to happen. But if these symptoms show up, if you have been fasting and you got great results, and then all of a sudden those results stopped, you got to do what Pompa said. He said it. You got to come out, and you got to eat, and then you got to go back in. And when you go back in, you'll drop more weight. If you're getting a thyroid problem, it's not that fasting wasn't a, was the problem, it was that you didn't vary the fast. That was the problem. If you're getting heart palpitations, you're losing hair, these are all signs you're not varying your fast enough. And again, I want you to vary them with your hormones. Last couple of thoughts that I'm gonna leave you with here. I hope you know that women, we need to fast differently. Somebody asked me the other day, they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, I don't, I don't even know how to explain that anymore. I'm like, uh, I teach women how to fast differently. And they're like, oh, I get that. Tell me more about that. And I think it's a message that needs to get out into the world. I want to tell you women, you need to do everything differently. You are a unique person with a unique hormonal profile. Know your hormones, build a lifestyle around it, and don't do it like any other man on the planet, and don't do it like any other woman on the planet. You are absolutely unique. So if your friend goes on a diet and gets great results and you go on that diet and you don't get those results, the pro it is not your problem. That is not an opportunity to be fill, fill your brain with guilt and shame. That is an opportunity to say, I gotta figure me out. This is so huge. Okay, second thing. A woman has to vary your fast so she doesn't get stuck and I, hopefully you all know now that you can vary it based off a of monthly or based off a of weekly, depending on your hormones. Last two things. Here's my book. You can pre-order it. I, this is, I, I've written four books now. The first three, when they came out, I was nauseated. I hated them. I was like, okay, world, here you go. It's just sort of what authors go through. I just got this back from Hay House uh, a week ago. I was looking through it, and I'm like, damn, this is good. I never say that. So I am, it is my gift to every woman. I, go, I, I hope this answers every fasting question we've ever had. I hope you guys find it in here so you can pre-order it. Uh, the menopause reset, we are, I, am, uh, we're, I guess we're doing a giveaway, doing book signings. You can come get it there. This was the gift I gave women over 40 to learn how to reset um, her hormones after 40. And if you want to know more of what I'm up to, YouTube is what I call my passion project. I do two new videos a week. Right now we're going really into hormones and fasting because of the book coming out. Um, Instagram, I find a lot of you on Instagram. You can fast, a free fasting group with my collab, uh, fa Facebook group. And if you wanna come really dial this in, I have a membership group where we're teaching women how to customize it and making it unique to her. So last thing, I'll, I, I'm out of time, but I gotta finish on this thought. Women, I can't emphasize enough Please stop comparing yourself to other women. Stop being competition to the, ourselves. I want to tell you one, one final thought here, is that after the 1918 pandemic, out of that came a very clear woman, and it was the flapper. And she was unruly and unladylike. She shortened her dress, she shortened her hair, she smoked, she drank, she changed the paradigm for women. Out of this pandemic comes the empowered woman. The woman who walks into her doctor's office and says, don't give me the same medication you gave every other man and every other woman, stops comparing herself to her friend who lost weight on a certain diet and takes in ownership back and responsibility back that this body is a flippin' miracle. And once you dial your lifestyle in, you will just discover what an incredible body you have been given. So please don't give up on yourself.